Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jason. And welcome everyone to our webinar today. Um, so the topic of our uh, webinar today is the new Azure DDoS IP protection scheme. Um, so I'm going to be starting off. My name is Salim Seu, and then we have my colleague Toby to learn who will take over for the second part. So let's have a look at the at our agenda today. Um, so first thing I will start off with the DDoS attack trends and types, and I will speak uh, about the uh, the uh, the trend that was published by the Microsoft Defender, uh, sorry, Microsoft Digital Defense Report for 2022. And then I will go over the um, the Azure DDoS protection SKUs, uh, network protection, which is the um, the original one we had, and also the peer IP SKU, which is uh, the new one. And then we will have the demo part, which Toby will take you through, and we will show you how to enable this new SKU on your public IPs, and also how to uh, see an attack, how to mitigate an attack, and also look at the uh, logs and the, the report. So without further ado, let's start. Um, so let's go over the DDoS attacks and trends and types. Um, so first thing, right? Like, so what's a DDoS attack? Um, DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service. Um, it's an attack where bad actors send large floods of legitimate traffic to an application or your network. Um, primarily, they use so, uh, some sort of a botnet to accomplish the disruption. Um, and botnets are usually made of uh, compromised um, Internet of uh, Things devices or personal workstations and servers that has some sort of malicious software that took over and is uh, initiating the DDoS attack. Um, and the goal is to take down the service by exhausting the application resources or the resources of the middle box, like you know, if you have a firewall, um, you have an application gateway or some uh, other resource uh, in between, um, and it will bring it down, right? So this can result, like uh, in some cases, just uh, like you know, poor connection to the website, you know, um, uh, or application performance, or in other cases, it can take it down um, offline altogether. Um, and this this style of attack is probably one of the biggest security concerns um, of today, and it can be very costly to to the business you're running. Um, and at the same time, it's very cheap and easy for the bad actors to initiate. Um, now, why should you care, right? So any public IP you have is vulnerable to a DDoS attack, um, and it is one of the top causes for the service availability for large enterprises. Um, and again, DDoS attack, um, if not mitigated, can be very costly to the organization um, to, you know, due to loss of customer interaction with your backend or dynamic resource scaling that handles the volume and the traffic coming in. So DDoS attacks are rampant and, um, you know, over the past year, um, the attacks experienced around the world um, have been uh, unmatched in volume, um, capacity, and also frequency. Uh, we've seen significant uh, rise in DDoS attacks that can be attributed to the, to the increase um, in nation state attacks and also continued availability and affordability for the DDoS for higher services. Um, for example, the Microsoft Digital Crime Unit uh, identified a cyber crime as a service merchant offering distributed denial of service, uh, so DDoS on subscription level. So the the um, uh, the initiator or the bad actor can actually hire or can pay for a subscription model to initiate DDoS attacks, um, and this model outsources all the creation maintenance of the bot uh, botnet that are necessary to start the DDoS attacks. Um, and each DDoS uh, subscription customer receives an encrypted service to enhance operation security and also one year of uh, support. Um, so these merchants um, offering these services, you know, are very easy to find. Um, and usually the cost can be, you know, as low as $500. Um, so the DDoS attacks are very easy to run these days. Um, there's even um, services that offer them. Um, and we're also seeing um, like, you know, social media platform um, enable the like rapid response and mobilization of thousands of would be citizen hackers who will provide the directions for conducting like an easy attack such as DDoS um, and organizers leverage uh, Twitter, Telegram and some private forms also to start or rally the hackers and organize operations um, and, and initiating these types of attacks. Um, the attack, attack trends that we've seen um, for the uh, 2022, so most attacks observed over this uh, uh, time, uh, so approximately 28% of the attacks lasted uh, less than 10 minutes, um, and then 26% lasted 10 to 30 minutes, 
14%, uh, 30 to 60 minutes, so one hour. And then the 23, uh, 2% of the attacks were more than an hour in duration. Um, and the, so the gaming industry continues to be the top target of DDoS attacks, uh, mostly for mutations of the Mirai botnet and low volume UDP protocol attacks. Um, since UDP is very uh, commonly used in gaming and also streaming applications, uh, majority of the attacks have vectors will UDP, spoof floats, and you can see here that that's the majority of the attacks. Um, and also some a small portion of UDP reflection and also amplification attacks. Um, in the last year, the attack vectors commonly employed by the UDP um, on port 80 are using, um, for example, SSDP, um, uh, CLDAP and DNS and also NTP, which is network time protocol. Um, of the DDoS attacks detected over the uh, past year, 54% uh, uh, were conducted against uh, targets in the United States, a um, trend that might be partially explained by the fact that uh, most Azure and Microsoft customers are in the United States. Um, we've seen also some um, sharp uptake in the attacks against India uh, from just 2% of all attacks in the second half of 2021 to 23% in the first half of 2022. Um, and then East Asia, Hong Kong in partic particular uh, remains a popular target at 8%. And for Europe, we've seen uh, some attacks against Amsterdam, Vienna, Fra uh, Paris, Frankfurt regions. And, um, and, especially, and uh, th this food footprint will continue to expand as increasing smartphone penetration drives the popularity of mobile gaming, uh, suggesting that this geographic like target will only continue to increase. So let's go over the different types of DDoS attacks, right? Um, and we will start with the most common, which is the volumetric um, attacks. Um, so volumetric attacks, uh, they use a massive amount of traffic, which saturates the bandwidth of the target, right? So um, your system. Uh, so volumetric attacks are very easy to generate, either using DDoS for higher services, which uh, mentioned, or attackers can also employ uh, simple amplification techniques. Um, so this type of attack generates high quantity of traffic, uh, for example, like EDB flood uh, that can completely block um, access to an end system, your website or some service that you're running um, in the cloud or on premises. Um, and these, these attacks are measured in bits or packets per second, a PPS. Um, and some examples of these attacks are like uh, ICMP flood, IP, uh, IPsec flood and also pre-UDP flood. The Second type of attacks <clears throat> are the protocol attacks. So protocol attacks are a type of attacks which causes a service disruption by consuming all the available capacity of uh, like web application servers or the capacity of intermediate resources, right? Right, like uh, firewalls, load balancers, or you know whatever you have in between that you know has a limited uh, resource. Um, it abuses the flow of the network uh, layer, so. Um, you know, it uses uh, protocols like IP, ICMP, and also IPsec, and also uh, flows on the transport uh, layer, like you know, flows and TCP and ODP protocols. Um, the most common example is TCP sync flood attack. So this attack exploits the TCP handshake by sending a target large number of TCP uh, sync packets and just TCP sync packets, or you know, the initial um, connection request with spoofed source I, I, you know, IP addresses um, and each time the, you know, the, the virtual machine, your server um, responds to this connection, um, keeps waiting you know, for the handshake, the TCP handshake to finalize, it never you know, completes, of course. So all these requests you know, will be in open state, um, waiting for a response, you know, using the resources you have um, with you know, no, of course, not, no reply, right? Which causes you know their uh, like you know your uh, virtual machine your server whatever you're running to become unavailable unresponsive or slow in that in that case so the third and last uh, DDoS type of attacks is are the resource attacks um, so the resource attacks um, and also known as application attacks or you know uh, layer seven attacks uh, target the backend servers right so this the or the goal of this attack attacks is the, to exhaust the resource of a target application and to abuse the flaws and vulnerabilities on the application itself which is because it's a layer 7 uh, attack right 
Um, so for example, when targeting web pages and you know, web uh, servers handles the HTTP request, a single HTTP request is simple to execute on the client side, right? Where, where the attacker is, but it demands a lot more from the target and the target you know is like you know your server um you know it takes more resources to you know to reply than you know to request information um and this is you know for example uh, this is how the, the attack works right so this type of attack is to challenge the identity and defend against right uh, because the traffic seems very legitimate it's um you know it's a legitimate traffic right just you know normal request uh, uh, for, for information or something from the website and you know and just because you know it comes in high volume um, it can become malicious right um, so DDoS protection by itself does not uh, we does not pr provide um, protection against layer 7 protocol attacks however uh, you, you need to use also WAF right so in the case of Azure um, you, you know if you uh, you should have the WAF enabled on your up, uh, if you're using application gateway or if you're using Azure front door then you should have also uh, WAF enabled in it um, so with the DDoS uh, protection um, you have also defense against these types of attacks now let's go over the Azure DDoS protection itself, right? So the uh, original SKU, or this is what we always had, was the Azure DDoS uh, network protection. Some of you may know it as Azure uh, DDoS protection standard. Um, now it's renamed to network protection because you know you enable it on the whole VNet, right? So um, so this queue, right? Um, you can enable it. You can enable the plan on the whole. Uh, I mean, on a tenant wide, right? So uh, you can have just one plan for the whole for your whole tenant, and you enable the protection peer VNet. So all the public IPs in that specific VNet are protected. Once you have this plan, enable it. Uh, on it, right? And you have also like uh, Azure Global Network Protection, Adaptive Tuning, Attack Analytics, you know, and other uh, features with this queue. Now, um, the this queue, um, when you enable it, you have, uh, you know, you're paying three thousand dollars, and you have also one hundred IPs. Um, and if for some customers and some users, you know, it's it's too big or, you know, some users just want, for example, you want just to protect five public IPs, right? Or just two or even one, right? And for that reason, now we have also the Azure DDoS IP protection, which is the new SKU. Um, so IP protection can be enabled, you know, directly on the public IP. You don't have to enable the, on, like on the whole VNet. Um, so, you know, for example, if you have just two public IPs, you just want to enable the DDoS protection on both of them. Now you can do it. Um, so this queue is designed for small and medium businesses. Um, you know, it's cost effective. It's enterprise grade DDoS protection. So you get, you know, the same uh, amount of protection that you get also from the uh, network protection. Um, there's just, you know, a few differences in features, which I will speak about in a bit. Um, you get also more flexibility. Um, it's very easy to configure and monitor, which means that, you know, you enable it on public IP, then you're protected, right? Um, there is not any additional uh, configuration you need to, to do to be fully protected. And it also has the same integration with Microsoft Defender for Cloud and also Sentinel. So let's go over the you know comparison between between these two SKUs, right? Um, as you can see, um, you know there are mostly three features that are you know the the biggest uh, difference between these. So you don't get the WAF discount, um, cost protection, and also DDoS rapid response support, right? Other than that, um, the DDoS IP protection you get like the same uh, amount of protection. Um, so there is you know always uh, active uh, traffic monitoring, always on detection. Um, in, in, in other types of integrations, metrics, um, and and uh, and also policies, right? And I will speak now uh, more about the uh, the features that uh, the IP protection has. So, in general, Microsoft Defend uh, DDoS protection is available in 62 regions. Um, it has a capacity mitigation capacity of 60 uh, terabits per second. Um, there is also it, it mitigates around uh 1900 attacks uh on daily basis 
and the DDoS protection is for uh, for uh, inbound traffic, so traffic coming or DDoS attacks coming in, and the same thing also for outbound, so from inside. Um, and the you know we are increasing this capacity um, you know on a regular basis. And um, the, as I said before, right, um, if you're in a, if you have IP protection or network protection, um, the amount or the same amount of protection you get from both of them. Um, so the the way it works um at least like you know uh for the ddos protection is we use adaptive tuning um so the ddos protection is not in line which means that the um you know if you have traffic coming to your public ip it's not checked for uh, ddos attack until there's a specific threshold that we use adaptive tuning policies um to set um is enabled right so once this threshold is enabled, um, then you know the the uh, the traffic goes to our mitigation pipelines. Now the adaptive tuning, uh, you know, uh, works based on the uh, application where you have the DDoS uh, or you have the public IP attached. So for example, like you know, if you're running um, an Azure firewall, then you know it will look at like the number of VMs, you know, if it's auto scaling out, scaling in, and the also at the traffic, right? So um, you know there is no extra configuration that needs to be done from you know the customer side. Basically, you know you enable the the, uh, the DDoS protection on your public IP. It will um, you know the adaptive tuning will set the, the mitigation uh, or threshold policy based on the you know uh, the scaling also the traffic and then uh, once that threshold is met it will enable the mitigation and the traffic you know goes to uh, the mitigation pipelines um, and of course it has also attack analytics and metrics so of course um, you know there's the metrics for example like you want to see um, you know when you were under a DDoS attack or not or when um, let's say like when the mitigation it was enabled you can see also about the as I mentioned before the adaptive tuning policies you can check like you know um, the, the where the threshold is for your like uh, uh, inbound uh, sync packets or you know uh, TCP or just UDP packets uh, threshold um, and then we have also the logging. So um, we have real time uh, logging for mitigation flow logs, which means that you can see, um, you know, during DDoS attack, you can see exactly what's uh, where the source, where it's coming from, um, if it was dropped, if it's uh, legitimate traffic, it was passed through, and all of this information, right? So this is all available uh, by enabling the lo diagnostic logging on the public IP. Um, and uh, as you can see here, we have also a um, attack data snapshot, which is every five minutes. And then you get also the full uh, post attack summary, um, which you know shows you like you know uh, all the what happened in this attack, how many pa packets uh, came through, what was dropped, the drop reasons, and all of this information in a um, aggregated report, right? Um, and the logging, of course, can be you know integrated with uh, different, like for example, Microsoft Sentinel, Splunk, OMS, or Azure Storage, right? So um, depending on what you want to use it with. Now the Azure DDoS protection, um, as I said earlier, uh, it integrates with Sentinel. Um, this picture you see here, so this is our uh, the workbook we have. Um, you can also, you know, if you're using DDoS, you can um, download this one and start using it. Um, gives you really easy to see, you know, view uh, of, you know, uh, the the attacks and mitigations and all the, all the information that I just mentioned, right? And of course, we have also the um, integration with Sentinel for, um, for example, for the analytic rules. Um, and uh, you can see, for example, like you know, from the top sources, like where the attacks coming from, and have also proactive uh, respond to it, where you know you, you can block the the source IP um, and different firewalls. Um, and of course, we have also the integration with Microsoft Defender for Cloud. Um, so you get like you know recommendations for if you have some unprotected public IPs, um, you get you know all of the um, alert in the single dashboard, and also uh, compliance recommendations. Um, and for before going to the demo and before uh, giving it to my colleague Toby, who will show you more information also about the, the logging that I mentioned, the configuration, all of this, I will just mention the, you know, uh, the difference in pricing, at least between these two SKUs, right? So this is the network SKU. This is the original, original SKU. Um, you know, it's $3,000 per month and uh, for 100 IPs for each IP over that, that's, there's a, uh, Thirty dollar month uh, extra, right? Um, and for the new SKU, which is actually now in, in GA, um, the there's a fixed cost 
of $199 um, per month for each public IP you're protecting, right? So if you have like you know, a few IPs, um, you know, the Azure DDoS IP protection can be for you. Um, and without further ado, um, I will give the floor to Toby, who will walk us through demo of uh, how to enable the new uh, IP SKU and also looking at the logs and the integrations. All right, uh, please let me know where you can see my screen. We can see it. Thanks everyone and thanks Salim. My name is Toby and um, the next couple of minutes I would uh, take some time to look into how DDoS IP protection works. Um, if you are already familiar with how um, DDoS protection works in Azure, as Salim had discussed earlier, our protection works in a way to understand the profile of your resources. So when you have different endpoints with their public IPs exposed to the internet and there are different um, traffic profiles with time is a learning path that happens where each value or threshold at which mitigation starts and mitigation um, is being reported uh, or is, uh, is being initiated or triggered it starts for each of those resources so the, the threshold value is quite custom with time and it begins to change because it's adaptive as he has mentioned now, as you mentioned earlier, our DDoS is not uh, in line, so uh, nothing is really happening until there is like an anomaly, which is now if you have if you are having spike, and the spike is going beyond the threshold value, and that's when uh, mitigation kicks in. And when mitigation kicks in, a few things happen. So we'll look at some of the things uh, that happen when mitigation starts. We'll look at um, a particular public IP, how to set up that IP. Um, for 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 DDoS protection, we will look into some logs. We will look into what happens during um, a DDoS attack. Um, you might be familiar with some of this information already, but in this case, we're going to be focusing more on um, the new SKU, which is the per IP protection. Uh, for this uh, uh, demo session, we'll be using the public IP of an application gateway. So I have um, an application gateway in my environment already. And it could be any public IP, but this is just the one that I'm going to be using. So for this particular uh, app, uh, app gateway, I'll be using the public IP of that app gateway, which in this case is this one here. So there are three ways. There are, first of all, to configure the, pub, the uh, IP DDoS protection for this public IP, we just have to come down right here where it says protect IP address. So if I click on that public IP address and I come down here, I can go to protect and I can pick a specific to this IP address. Now, this option was not there before. The only options you had was this network protection, which used to be the one that you used to refer to as the standard. And for this particular one, you apply this one on the old virtual network, and then the public IPs within that virtual network will be covered. But for customers who do not want to use this feature and they just want to enable on a specific IP address, then they can use this new SKU option here, which is specific to just this IP address alone. So if I don't want uh, uh, DDoS protection at all, then I can disable completely. But in this case, uh, for our demo, we, we already enabled this um, IP specific to this address and we have saved that. So that's this is where you come. Just make sure you enable this radio button and you uh, click on save. All right. So now that that has been enabled on the uh, public IP address, there are about three ways that you can view uh, the DDoS telemetry for a protected public IP address. You can either do it on the virtual network, you can do it on the DDoS protection plan, or you can do it on the public IP address itself. So for instance, this is the public IP address that I have. I can go to the metrics here and I can see uh, the the, the metrics for this particular IP address. I can also go uh, to the virtual network or I can go to the uh, DDoS protection plan. But for this one, we'll be doing it on the uh, on the metrics. We'll be doing it on the IP address itself because this is the per IP plan that we are working with here today. And when you want to see the metrics for the particular IP plan, there's some things that you want to look out for. As Salim had mentioned earlier, there are three 
at peacetime, when everything is normal, when there is no spike, there are three um, resources that you're going to see in this matrix that is going to be very, very helpful for you, which will be the uh, the inbound scene packets. You will see the, uh, the TCP scene, the scene packet and the UDP packets. You, you, you can see those. Uh, some other metrics will not be av available until mitigation starts. So again, like I said, during peacetime, uh, we are not really doing anything for you because it's not really doing anything because there is no attack being noticed, especially at layer three and layer four level. Uh, for layer seven, that's a completely different uh, ball game. But at this layer and at this level, uh, until mitigation kicks in, so metrics will not be available uh, for you. Uh, and it's very easy. You can simulate this as well. You can work with some of our partners. We have a uh, breaking cloud partner and we have a uh, breaking point cloud and we also have the Red Wolf and they can help to uh, do this simulation. We have already, I have already done this simulation in time past, so the plan is to make sure that we can cover much more because it takes some time to uh, send the, uh, the traffic, the, the crafted traffic across to this public IP address to start that. But I'll show you what happens and it's very easy. For instance, uh, for the breaking point cloud, I already know what my public IP address is. If I go back here, I know that the public IP address of my app gateway in this case is 20.112, you know, the four octets here. So if I take this public IP and I go to breaking point, assuming that I have breaking point, um, um, uh, I have signed up to use this breaking point. Instead, I can put my IP address here, specify my port, and then I can choose the TCP SIM float. Again, like Salim already explained, TCP SIM float is the, uh, is, this is the traffic that comes with connection request between the client and the server. And I can then specify what particular uh, size of traffic I want to send and how long I want to send it for. So this is an example of how you can actually um, do a demo in your own environment and see how it responds. Basically, it's always good to have some of this uh, um, occasional demo in your environment. You don't want to wait till there is um, an occurrence and then figure out what your action plan is. It also helps to um, know what to expect when a DDoS attack is happening and then how you can, you know, work successfully to um, to understand and prosecute what has happened. You can also create an incident response plan around that, basically, so it kind of helps to um, understand what you should expect when it happens. So uh, in this case, so like I mentioned earlier, if I go back to metrics here, I can then say, okay, this is my public IP address here, and what do I want to look for? I want to come back, I want to come down here and look for when I am under attack or not. So uh, in the last couple of hours, I've not been under attack, but like I mentioned earlier, we've done some simulation already with this same attack, which is, I showed you how to do the simulation, which you come here and you do. It takes a couple of minutes and we're gonna be, uh, not gonna be doing that in this session. But if I go back, say within the last 30 days, you can see the ones that I did and you can see here, again, uh, the signal to know when we are under ODDS attack is it's Boolean, so it's either zero or one, which is when I'm under attack, it's zero. when I'm not under attack, it's zero. And when I'm under attack, it's this turns to one because at that point, um, it's, 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 again, it's, it toggles and it's, it's triggered. So at this point, I can begin to, let me know if you cannot see my screen or if it's too tiny, thanks. <clears throat> so at this point, uh, mitigation would start. So I can, if I wanna see more about this, I can actually just, I already know the date it happened. It happened around like 13th. So I can just come back here and I can, you know, do custom date. I can tell, I can say, just show me between 12th and 14th of April. Excuse me. Uh, of April and 14th. So, uh, sorry, just a second. Let's see if I can pull that. April, oh, that was 17th, sorry. I, I believe this was 17th. So if I go back to between 15th and 18th, I should be able to pull that out. All right, so um, you can uh, walk around this and begin to uh, get more understanding of what happened in the environment. Another thing you can do is you can add a new chart. You can add a new chart to this and then say, okay, within this same scope and within the same date, I want to see what happened. I can just look at my packet count so I can see what actually happened. At what um, point did my packet start, um, at what particular 
point did my uh, mitigation kick in for this particular period so I can begin to see what happened. So before I was having like near insignificant values and then it began to short into millions of um, requests coming in packets per second that was coming in. So at this point, I can begin to find the actual numbers and how, you know, how much value of uh, traffic it was, how much packet it was. So re regularly I was having, you know, very tiny amounts in less than 10,000 packets per second. And all of a sudden it went into the millions. So um, the, you, you can begin to add your own values and begin to see what's uh, happening in your environment. So that gives you that visibility that you need to to see what's going on in your environment. You can uh, uh, do more. You can actually begin to see, OK, uh, was there inbound UDP bytes to at some point? So you can begin to set some of these things. OK, nothing happened for UDP. You just it just gives you that visibility that you need. At what time did I have a, a mitigation? Uh, when at what uh, threshold value did it kick in? 200 uh, kilobytes, uh, uh, kilo, uh, pack, packet per second. When, when it's 200K, when my traffic hits 200K per second, uh, that's my threshold and anything above this threshold. So we're doing around 6,000 before, like I showed you earlier. And then all of a sudden we went into the millions, which definitely is more than my threshold value. So at that point, it is abnormal, it's unusual, mitigation would kick in. And we're going to see how, what happens when mitigation kicks in. Uh, one of the things that you want to do in your environment, of course, is, um, you want to create alerts. So when you come to alerts, you can create actions and in your actions, you can specify, okay, uh, what happens to, sorry, excuse me. So what you want to do is you want to create alert rules and in the alert rules, you want to create actions such that when a particular thing occur, what do you want to happen when that occurs? So you create an alert rule and say, when I have this particular figure uh, uh, value and select that condition, when I'm under the DOS attack or not, you can then create a signal. Say, okay, tell me this to happen. Um, do that to happen for me. And the actions that you will set up is you will create an action group, and in there you will select your email address or phone number, and there you can send it to a particular um admin or a group of people within a particular environment. So that way you can be notified. You don't have to do that, but it just you know it just works for you to know what's happening in your environment when it's happening. You can see the mitigation uh, information and all of that. Also, we're going to cover more a bit about that in a second. Um, uh, somebody, somebody, please feel free to stop me if there's a particular question that you think we need to address that will help everybody as we go along, if it cannot wait till the end um, of the presentation. All right, so uh, another thing I wanted to show us is diagnostic settings. So this is how you actually configure the logs because we are using the logs that is being piped to of every of, of the event happening in our environment to create some of this telemetry. We're using these logs to actually also create uh, some of this visualization that you see. So how do you get the logs? So in my own case, I have already set up uh, uh, my public IP for App Gateway Diagnostics. This is the name for mine. You probably have name for yours, and I am storing that log into here. If I click on edit settings, I can see what kind of log is being piped. For me, it's all logs. Sometimes for some customers, they just want maybe two of these, but I would advise that you have all your metrics being sent there and you can you know, select all your logs and you can put that in your environment. You can also put this in a storage account if you have one, so it gets archived away because of size. Uh, from a governance and compliance perspective, you might want to say for every uh, public IP that you have, you want to make sure that you um, you have the DOS enabled on that. So what you can do is you can go to policy. Um, if I go into policy here, I can, and you can look at what policies are available for your uh, for DDoS protection. So if I go to definitions, so you go to policy, you go to definitions, and in my own case, I'll go to I'll look for uh, for policy definitions that have something to do with DDoS because. I want to find what DDoS policies are available. Uh, some of these policies you can build by yourself. Some come uh, already built in for you. So in my case, if I search for DDoS, uh, I can look at the built-in ones here. These are some custom ones that we have also created over time. These are some that we were testing. But what you want to look for are the uh, built-in ones. So you see this one, it says public IP addresses should have resource logs enabled for Azure DDoS protection standard. Uh, you can have um, Azure DDoS protection standard that should be enabled. So something like this, you might want to make sure that every public IP that is exposed to the internet has um, 
uh, DDoS enabled. You can also go to our GitHub. I don't know if you're familiar. It's aka.ms slash easynetsec. That's Azure Network Security. That's aka.ms slash easynetsec. And if you come in here, you can go to, yeah, this is the simplest plug. We, sorry, uh, that did go to we have it. it's good. easy let's sick so if you come here uh you can see here we have um artifacts and things that will um improve your network security for firewall waf and ddos as well so if you go to azure ddos protection here and you look at our azure policy definitions you can see some of the definitions other definitions that we have you can use them you can enable diagnostic login for every DDoS protection that you have. So by default, every time somebody deploys something new, um, this will be enforced. And that way you wouldn't have to keep looking to see who, who has done what or who hasn't done what. So basically from a governance perspective, this is super important. This is super helpful. And we have the same thing for whether network security product as well and you can you know build on this you can change values if you feel like okay this value is too strict or this is too lax for my environment you can edit some of those and use it for your own environment all right so uh i'm gonna go back to my public ip again and see what else can i do uh so again i'm back to my public ip here now if i go to i've already gone into my metrics i've shown a few things so now an attack has happened we have shown the visualization of when it happened on April 17th. We have shown you how um, the mitigation kicked in. But how do you see these values? How do you actually know what happened? How do you, you know, prosecute this, look into this and say, OK, what kind of attack was it? And um, uh, what was the error that was, gen what was the report that was generated? So we go into our logs. So, uh, so you can just go to your diagnostic log. So I have gone in there here already, but if you don't know how to do that, you can just come here and look for your log uh, analytics workspace and you select your own workspace. So in my case, uh, I just, if I do go to log analytics workspace here and I just go to mine, which will be this particular resource group, uh, one second. Yep, so this is my here network security logs. And if I come in here and I go to my logs, oh, so the table that is going to be storing our logs today is going to be the Azure Diagnostics table. So in this case, I already have some that I've worked on before. So I can just run those easily. So in my cases, uh, I'm just going to comment this one out for now. So basically, if you just go to Azure Diagnostics and I look for this particular category, which is DDoS protection notifications. I want to see what notifications that my DDoS protections are sent out recently. So uh, I have selected a date already. So in my case, if I run this, uh, I can see the date that I selected as well. Excuse me. So my custom date has been from March to May. So basically, I mean, that's pretty large, no doubt, but I can always change that date and I can check the last couple of uh, I can be more specific last 24 hours, last seven days. Um, I'm sure you're pretty familiar with how log analytics space works. So uh, for this example, uh, you will see uh, different fields in this case, but the most important part is I can see the categories, protection notifications. So if I expand on this, what you will see is you can see the report type. So the type here, it says mitigation stopped. So at this particular one, this is where mitigation stops. So easily, if you, if I want to see something else apart from mitigation stop, I can exclude this value. I can say, OK, uh, I don't want to see mitigation stop. So now I'm excluding this value. So I should be able to find where it started, something like that. So if I'm excluding this now, these are all, this is all that is left. So on the same day, which is April 17th that we mentioned, I can see other things. I can see where it started, mitigation started. So I can see what time it started. And this is what, and what happened then, the message was that, there was inbound traffic exceeds infrastructure default threshold. So there's a threshold that I've already shown us, in this case, 200K for my inbound um, uh, for that particular value. If you want to see uh, uh, what values your, for your UDP, they are all different. So we can go back here. I think I mentioned that earlier. So if you go to your metrics and you want to see your threshold values, you can easily go to uh, what particular value it triggers. So you see say here, inbound, same packet to trigger DDoS mitigation. So you can begin to see. So mine is 
40k here and at 50k there will be there will be some form of okay what's going on here should i start mitigation or not and when mitigation starts it will start and when it stops it goes back to my regular threshold so you can see that in this case is my 40 if i want to look for what is my threshold value for uh for my udp packets to trigger i can come here as well i'll look for my inbound udp packets to trigger ddos mitigation and i can see the value it's about 40 uh i think it's about 80k here so yeah so like i mentioned earlier depending on what your environment is, um, looks like you can see that value so you can actually get the threshold value for uh this tcp scene uh tcp and udp so you can get those values from there all right so back here so you can use uh ddos protection notifications to actually get more information on what happened Another one you can use is the mitigation report. So if I use my mitigation report here, pretty similar to everything we did with DDoS notification. I can say, okay, for the same custom range, it's pretty large. I need to reduce that size. So I'll stop wasting our time. All right, something similar. I can expand on this and can look at my mitigation report. This is a post mitigation type. That's the report type that I have. So this is post mitigation. So Mitigation has happened already. My 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 network is back to the regular average threshold value, and then I can see what other type of um, attack vet vector it is. Uh, the TCP flawed, and you can see what the packet count is. So all of this, I can see that I can see the top source country is Seychelles. At Seychelles, okay, I always mess mess that up, but I think you get what I'm trying to say. So and you can uh, you can get some of those information that you want from here. Uh, so but all of this could be uh, sometimes it gets a bit tedious to to do. Uh, one more thing before we, I go to the next phase. So some of these things are pretty difficult to see. And if I do mitigation flow logs as well, I can get more information on the flow of that uh, particular some of those attacks and when when they happen. So again, you see the start and the end. But the major problem here is it's pretty difficult to come here and be doing all of this investigation one by one. Again, it's large values. You don't know where it started. You have to actually do like six, seven, eight steps. So what you can also do again is, uh, uh, this is gonna give you some information. Okay, what kind of message, what kind of um, violation was it? So to tell you what kind of uh, violation it happened. Again, you get more information here. But like I before I digress, like I was saying, you need a something more comprehensive to, give you all the information that you're looking for at a glance like at one look so you can come again you can come again to our uh our github and you can download a workbook for ddos protection and this workbook gives you like the kind of visualization that you probably need you can also use application insights to just see what's going on in your environment app insight also gives you that um information but it's not detailed from a ddos perspective it just gives you generic you know the information that you need to know in terms of where is the source of the traffic coming and where is it landing in your environment. But this workbook has been tailored to DDoS. And I have deployed this, it's pretty straightforward. If I click on deploy here, it will ask me to fill in some values, which is where do I want the logs to come from because I need my logs to rep do that representation. But I'm not gonna go into this one because I've already deployed one that we can use. So if I go back in here and I go to my resource group, uh one second all right so i okay i don't i don't want to lose that one so just gonna go back to my resource group pretty quick uh, g all right so if i go back to my resource group here i already deployed that uh ddos protection workbook this is what it looks like So if I open up my workbook, I can see information about my environment. So uh, the workspace that I'm currently using in my case is the CXC network security workspace, which should be this one. All right. And I don't want to do the last 90 days because I know it happened within the last 30. I'm, I'm pretty sure. And I can look for the particular public IP that I'm looking for. So let's just choose the last 60 days. And I know that the public, particular public IP I'm looking for is my app gateways public IP, which is the socketers. 
So it's this one, the Sockiness App Gateway Public IP. So if I do that, now I have visibility again, like I mentioned earlier, it's April, April 17th, how do you know that value? So, but if I already had this visualization going on, I didn't have to go, you know, doing all of those steps. I can easily see that on April 17th, there was a TCP SIM flood. There was 25, 25 million, you know, packets at some point that was coming in at this particular time of the day. Of course, that's a whole lot. So if I just like, you know, click on this one, and see what happened again my app gateway that's where it happened i can then begin to see where did this happen where you know what what happened what kind of thing happened what kind of protocol was violated if i click here i can see some information i can see what continent origin north america of course i can see that um couple five percent came from europe i can see so that's the continent and then i can see the country of origin i can see the autonomous system number so i can begin to see all the values that um that uh, the, the drop reason is what kind of reason is it? You can see that value here. So if I is a protocol violation, that's the drop reason there. So uh, I come here, I get more of that information again, and you can see it's giving me all of the information that I was actually investigating, going through through metrics and going through uh, log analytic workspace. I can see all of those using this um, workbook. So this workbook gives you that view that you need to uh, get all of that information. And like I mentioned earlier, don't forget you can use the Breaking Point Cloud or you can use the Red Wolf. You have resources uh, that will help you to, to try that. Also, you can, you don't have to use Portal for those who uh, do CI CD, you want to use PowerShell to do it. We also, uh, to enable, uh, to in the same way we enabled the, we came to the public IP address at the beginning and we use this to protect, to click on protecting. You can also enable it using your uh, PowerPoint. So if I come here, I'll share this in the chat. I hope you um, share this in the chat window. So you can use that as well to uh, enable it. So there is a, is the part of the key, there's a key switch there that you just need to switch to enable. So you can see here, enable DDoS IP protection for an existing public IP address. So um, you can do that. And if you see here, for a public IP address, you create a, uh, you have a resource group. If you, are, if you don't have one, you create a resource group. And then at the end here, there is a switch, which is the DDoS protection mode. And then you click enable, you specify to enable that. There. Uh, so excuse me, there's, what's up? There's something else I wanted to show. So there's some things that uh, are not available. Uh, we've discussed the pricing. Uh, one of the things that we might not be able to get also from DDoS IP protection uh, for public IP individual public IP address is the rapid response. So when you use the DDoS network protection today, you have access to the rapid response team and there is a way to contact them. But when you use this um, uh, this particular product for now, we do not have rapid response teams availability for this. So uh, you might want to discuss that terms around the terms around that with uh, your uh, your solution architects. But as it says today, you do not have that um, that feature available. So um, I know we're running ahead of time already. We're going to be leaving some time for questions uh, concerning that. So again, uh, that's that will be all about uh, uh, public um, IP protection for now. If you have any questions, please. Uh, this is time to to um, ask your question. Great, <clears throat> thanks, Toby. Um, the team's been great with answering questions. We do have a few. Um, the first one is: Are there any advanced alerts which can be configured before the DDoS threshold has been reached? For example, if we are receiving about a hundred thousand traffic hits, but the threshold set by DDoS is for two hundred k. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. That. Okay, sure. Sure, yeah, I can take it. So um, that's totally possible. Um, so under the uh, under your public IP resource um, itself, if you go to the metrics there, um, and then you will have three metrics to choose from, right? So you have the TCP, TCP sync, and also the UDP thresholds. Now choosing one of these and then going to, uh, for example, like you know, inbound sync packets to trigger, and then you go to the new alert rule. You can create a rule there 
and you can specify the threshold that you want to have. And as a, an example, like, you know, even if it's like higher, like 200,000 packs per second, you can have something lower here um, just so you can get an alert. And of course, there's, you know, more actions, stuff you want, you can configure here for alert, like, you know, email, SMS. Um, but yeah, that's, it's totally possible. You can do it today. Great. Uh, the next question is, what happens if you have over 100 public IPs? Um, so it depends on which SKU you're using, right? So if it's the original one, the network um, protection, um, each uh, public IP after 100, you're paying um, $30 extra, right? Now, if you have um, for, for the IP SKU, the uh, the price is fixed, right? So it's um, one ninety nine dollars for each public IP. Um, so it, you know it doesn't make any difference, right? From pricing for the IP protection. Now, um, the you know rec general recommendation, right? So if you do have um, you know more than uh, one hundred IPs, then it's definitely you know cheaper to go with the network uh, protection plan SKU, and uh, since you also get the cost protection, you know. Um, and all of this, so I would say, like, you know, if you have that many public IP to go with the other SKU, um, you know, and uh, yeah, it, it would be cheaper in that case. Great, thank you. The next question we have is, <clears throat> can this product protect IPs for Azure public IPs as well as in hybrid environments, uh, the on-prem public IPs? Um, yeah, that's totally possible. So. So the um, the DDoS protection, right, can be enabled only, of course, on Azure public IPs um, and specifically resource based um, public IPs. Now, uh, it really depends on the um, on how you have the architecture configured, right? So in the, you know, in the case of if you have like a um you know um like application gateway configured and that you know application gateway then uh, sends the traffic using a vpn to your on-prem server then yes you can you know you can enable the ddos protection on that public ip for the application gateway and you will have the uh, ddos protection great thank you uh the next question is uh, could you elaborate further on this as on this explanation you can protect on-premises resources uh, though with DDoS protection, as long as there is a private network path to the application on-prem and that application uses the Azure public IP for its ingress. Um, yeah, so the, um, in the chat, there's a, in the comments, there's a very good example, you know, of um, using um, an application gateway. So, you know, the example, right? So you have a public IP attached to your um, application gateway. In the application gateway, you have, you know, configured um, the uh, the back servers, you know, as, you know, the servers you have on-prem and the connection is routed or, you know, goes through the um, the VPN connection from your, you know, the Azure to, to your on-prem, you know, firewall device. So in that case, right, the, um, you know, the, um, the, the, the traffic goes through, you know, VPN, you know, and then goes to Azure and the public facing interface is that public IP, right? So that public IP you can protect with DDoS protection and you know you will you will get the protection for for the for your on-prem server, right? In that case. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is when inbound traffic exceeds a threshold, is traffic arbitrarily dropped or is that configurable? Um so um the first thing right so it's it's definitely not you know just drop the traffic so the as i said earlier like the ddos protection is not um in line so which means that you know once that specific threshold you have that is made by the uh, adaptive uh, tuning policy um is met what happens is that the traffic going to your public ip they are diverted um and they're sent to our um, mitigation um, devices, right? So there um, we have, you know, a few tests that we do, um, you know, depending of course on the attack and the traffic. Um, and, you know, in the case of, uh, for example, like Toby showed earlier, the uh, the TCP sync uh, flood attack, you know, in that case, for example, the um, these connections themselves, like, you know, the requests are being, you know, checked with a uh, sync, right? So if it doesn't reply, it will drop the traffic. 
and you know as a, as a malicious traffic right uh since you know um in that type of attack the attackers will ju just try to open you know um more connections and uh, use the resources um now um is it configurable uh, not really right now so you you know you cannot um configure it um but you know so all, all the thresholds are being done right now by the adaptive tuning itself right so there is no extra um, uh, configuration that needs to be done from the user and they just need to enable the uh, ddos protection on their public ip great thank you uh that seems to be all the questions that we have so um with that i'd like to thank you salim and toby for being our guest today and for an excellent presentation and thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions at the same time i would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms security community and while there you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities a good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash Azure NetSec feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.